Ancient inhabitants of Mesoamerica used tobacco for drinking, not smoking. A dozen or so years ago, in the city of Cozumalhuapa in Guatemala, archaeologists came across vessels dating back about a thousand years. Recent analysis showed that they contained tobacco. However, these were not dried leaves intended for smoking, but probably an infusion of the plant. Early colonial accounts and contemporary ethnographic sources confirm the widespread use of tobacco in Mesoamerica. Although direct evidence in archaeological contexts of these practices is rare, North Americans have been using tobacco for at least 12,300 years. It was used primarily for religious purposes. Artistic depictions and ethnographic sources indicate that the preferred method of tobacco consumption throughout the region is and has been the smoking of dried leaves. However, in new research, scientists from Yale University the City University of New York and the Hershey Center for Health and Nutrition presented evidence indicating that ancient inhabitants of America may not have smoked tobacco, but drank. All this for ritual and therapeutic purposes. The results and description of the research were published in the journal antiquity. Kotsumalwapa was one of the largest cities in Mesoamerica in the so-called the Late Classical Period, which covers the period between 650 and 950 AD. The city had great importance both politically and economically in the entire region. However, little is known about the ritual practices that took place there. Archaeologists discovered a collection of pottery during excavations in 2006 and 2007 at the Kotsumalwapa site. The excavation uncovered four figurines seven small pottery vessels and 21 large vessels, 11 of which were covered with inverted bowls. These bowls were probably intended to protect their contents. Analysis of samples scraped from inside the vessels using liquid chromatography mass spectrometry revealed the presence of nicotine residues in three vessels. The results of the analyzers raise important questions about the consumption and ritual use of tobacco in ancient Mesoamerica. The tall and narrow shape of the vessels is similar to those typically used to store liquids, so the discovery of tobacco residues in them was unexpected. This could mean that instead of smoking tobacco in the form of dried leaves or ingesting it through the nose like snuff, tobacco, could be consumed as a liquid infusion, the statement said. We knew that tobacco was a very important substance used for various ritual and therapeutic purposes in ancient Mesoamerica, says study co-author Dr. Oswaldo Chinchilla Mazariegos from Yale University. 
However, archaeological evidence is sparse because tobacco remains rarely preserve well, he adds. The study authors suggest that tobacco infusion may have been used during rituals as a drug inducing deep sleep and visions. They also noted that pottery was found near the remains of the Kotsumalwapa baths, which they said was evidence that tobacco infusions may have been used in cleansing rituals. Astronomers predict the star system will explode. It will be visible to the naked eye. NASA scientists have estimated that a new T. coronae borealis will explode within the next six months. When the explosion occurs, this system of stars, located about 3,000 light years from Earth, will be visible to the unaided eye. T. coronae borealis is a binary system consisting of a red giant and a white dwarf. The latter steals matter from its partner and is surrounded by an accretion disk. The two elements of the system are separated by about half the distance of the Earth from the Sun. The stars orbit each other every 228 days. The T. coronae borealis system is located in the constellation Corona North. Its explosions have already been observed twice. Most recently in 1946 and previously in 1866. Both explosions were visible to the unaided eye. The system then brightened approximately 1,500 times. Astronomers believe another one could occur within the next six months. This may be a unique opportunity to observe this rare phenomenon. The T. coronae borealis system currently requires a telescope to observe. But it may soon become bright enough to make equipment unnecessary. Astronomers are not sure when the explosion will occur. This is expected to happen any time until September. Although some forecasts say that we will have to wait until next year for fireworks. Once the explosion occurs and the system's brightness peaks, T. coronae borealis should be visible to the naked eye for several days and just over a week with binoculars before dimming, possibly for another 80 years. The system's stars are close enough to each other that when the red giant becomes unstable due to increasing temperature and pressure and begins to eject its outer layers, the white dwarf accumulates this material on its surface. The white dwarf's shallow, dense atmosphere eventually heats up enough to trigger a runaway thermonuclear reaction producing the nova we can see from Earth. Some white dwarfs steal material from their companions, but they do so irregularly. Others seem to stick to their schedule. T. coronae borealis falls into the latter category. This is the so-called return nova, i.e. a nova whose explosion has been observed again. Only a few similar systems have been discovered in our galaxy. Eighty years passed between the first and second known eruptions of the T. coronae borealis system. If this were to happen exactly again, we should expect another explosion at the end of 2025. However, Astronomers noticed in 2016 that the system had brightened by about threefold. The increase in brightness was not as dramatic as during earlier outbursts, but this event showed that the system was becoming more active. Unfortunately, 
These phenomena are poorly understood and scientists cannot determine exactly when the explosion will occur. In fact, if the outbreak had occurred a few years earlier or later, it wouldn't have been a big surprise. Last year, Professor Bradley Schaefer of Louisiana State University noticed that the T. coronae borealis system had undergone a noticeable dimming before the 1946 event. Something very similar was recently observed based on the time from dimming to maximum brightness. Schaefer estimated that we should expect the explosion to occur between February and September this year.